Hello, and welcome to another episode of Bike Radar Diaries, which is all about what we like to get up to here at the good ship Bike Radar. Yes, recently, Jack and I did a video in partnership with Rota, where we rode 282 kilometers across the north coast of England. It was a really fun day out, and you can find a link to that video in the description. Cream crackers, Joe. Absolutely gas. We were lucky enough to do that ride on a pair of rather nice gravel bikes, which you were all quite interested in. So we've decided to do this video, where we're gonna look at them in a bit more depth, but neither of us can decide which is the best, or the coolest, or the most handsome. So we've decided to put it out to you, which of our two gravel bikes is the favorite. I was on an Argon 18 Dark Matter, very nice gravel bike, whereas Jack was on a Specialized Diverge. So as we've already said, we want you to decide whose was the best. We're gonna put a community post up on the Bike Radar channel, and once you've watched this video, you can then decide, vote for it, and whoever loses has to do a forfeit. We haven't decided what that forfeit is yet, but as per usual, it'll probably involve some pain and suffering. So sit back, relax, and cast your eye over our beautiful bicycles before deciding which you think is the best. So, as with any good versus video, we're going to start with the frames. Jack, put your case forward for your Specialized Diverge. I was on, as Joe said, a Specialized S-Works Diverge, the very top-end frame set. I was very lucky enough to get to ride that one. And before we go into any of the interesting tech about the frame, let's be just straight up honest here. My paint job is cooler. In terms of the frame itself, it's made from Specialized top-end Fact 11R the carbon layup. It has the older version now of the Future Shock. So that's a little kind of suspension unit above the head tube, which gives you a bit of damping in your bars. And then the frame set as well has provisions for all manner of adventuring accessories, including three bottles, mud guards, panniers, those little additional bags you can get in the forks. It's a truly adventure ready machine. I'd live there. Yeah. Yes, I think I'm gonna have to give it to Jack that my Argon 19 Dark Matter in its kind of champagne gold finish isn't quite as pretty as the S-Works Diverge. But one thing I would say about the Dark Matter is that it's a bit more simple and probably easier to maintain than the S-Works Diverge. Obviously, it doesn't have the future shock. It's just a kind of normal looking carbon gravel frame. And that means if anything goes wrong with it, it's gonna be a bit easier to repair. Another thing I really liked about it is that the head tube in a size 57 I was riding, which is quite a tall bike for me in the uh, Argon 18 Dark Matter sizing, was really tall and that gave me quite a nice upright position on the drops. When we did that long ride, we kind of wanted to take, keep the pace going a little bit and I found with that high position where I could put my hands on the drops, gave me a really nice kind of semi-aero, comfortable position, I guess I'd call it. And yours probably didn't size out quite as well, did it? No, it's, it's a little bit of a shorter bike overall. The Argon, I mean, you can kind of see it in the photos alone. It's, it's a, a bigger bike overall. So the special was perhaps just a little bit more compact. I could have perhaps made that a bit better with a longer stem. But I think as an overall package, it's more like a traditional bike, the geometry of the Argon. So maybe a slightly more uh, modern shape, we could say. Yeah, and if you were riding kind of hardcore off-road gravel with lots of um, you know, bumps and rocks and stuff like that, I think the Future Shock technology would really help you there. Whereas the Argon 18 is probably designed for more smoother, kind of traditional gravel roads, I guess. Now in the opposite sense of that, on my bike, we ran quite similar setups in terms of the wheels and tires. I had a set of Rotor's own carbon wheels, and to this I fitted a set of 32 mil WTB exposure tires. I really like these tires a lot. I've used the slick 30 mil version on my other road bike, and I think they just give really good all round performance, and they come in town wall, which is very important for a fashionista like me. On your bike though, I had incredibly premium NV SES disc wheels and they had some nice wide 40C WTB nano tires on them. This meant for the gravel bits, those nice wide tires really helped me. Jack, your tires were a bit thinner, but you did have the fuse shock to help you out. Yeah, I think overall though, for kind of rougher terrain, you just can't beat chunky tires. It's even though I had the future shock, at the end of the day, it's not really suspension. All it does is suspend me, the rider, so for over that rougher terrain, although it's more comfortable, it's definitely not as fast as big wide tires. So you win in this circumstance, Joseph. 
Yes, and another thing I'll mention about the MV wheels compared to the Rota R45 wheels that Jack was riding is that they are a little bit wider and that is something we've both really come to like on kind of gravel bikes and mountain bikes is those wide rims. And that's for many reasons as well. The wider rims overall help with kind of tubeless setup. They give a better profile overall, which is a bit more supportive in rough terrain. And uh, you were the only person to have kind of trouble with seating your tyres tubeless, weren't you, on those kind of slightly narrow rims with slightly smaller tyres. You did have to faff with them a bit during the ride, didn't you? I did, and it probably has something to do with the fact I'd set them up the day before as well. Obviously, Rotor was our sponsor for this video, so naturally we were using its new 1x13 group set. We've done loads of videos about this, and you can see all the links to those in the video description, but where we did have a choice was in our gearing. Now, I'm a legend, a hard man, so I went for a 46 tooth chain ring, which was paired with a 10 to 39 tooth cassette. So relatively tight spread overall, a little bit closer in the middle of the block. Whereas Joe? I went for a 42 tooth rotor cueing at the front. You had the cueing as well, didn't you? And then a 10 to 46 cassette on the back. So I had a much bigger spread of gears, but kind of less top end speed. Throughout that ride, it was a long ride, not too many big hills. We both had moments where we shone those gearing choices, didn't we? Yes, I could have definitely have done without being so much of a hero in a few areas and the longer climbs, particularly towards the end. But then I guess on the longer, flatter sections, I could kind of skip between gears more closely without affecting my cadence too much. So it's a balancing act. Yeah, I think maybe the, the perfect combination we thought would have been my cassette. So that's the 10 to 46 tooth cassette with the 46 tooth chain ring and that for kind of gravel riding and the slower climbs, but you're still going quite fast on those descents when you get the pedals turning would have been pretty much bob on, wouldn't it? Now, one place we did not have a choice with the bikes was with the brakes. Yes, we both had the Magura disc brakes, which come with the Rosa 1x13 group set. And I think we can both safely say that disc brakes are great. Better. Finishing kit, well, there wasn't much in it really, especially at the cockpit, because I had an aluminium profile design stem and I had a bar, well, I can't see the logo on it, so I'm not sure what it was, but again, it was aluminium. It had a nice flat top, which was quite comfortable to grab, whereas you had specialized cockpit. I did, and I'm, you know, a bourgeoisie of the uh, cycling industry, so alloy wasn't good enough for me. So I had a set of specialized compact carbon bars with really nice flat tops. Incidentally, these are 40 centimetre wide bars. I normally go for wider for gravel, but I actually really liked them on the day. So that was a nice little discovery. And then just an alloy specialised stem. And then for the seat post, it was one of specialised own cobble gobbler or CGR uh, seat posts, which have that funny little elastomer, which are claimed to give you a little bit more compliance in rough terrain. And this paired with that cambium saddle, the Brooks cambium saddle. I love that saddle, I've used it a lot now. The two of those together gave a really, really comfortable kind of uh, seat post saddle combo. So big thumbs up for me there. Jack's uh, saddle and post combo certainly looked quite comfortable. My seat post was just a kind of aluminium model, very standard, very stock, and then had a Physique Antara saddle, which is very flat. It's more of the kind of saddle you'd see on a road race bike. So I think if I could choose again, I'd probably go for something like the Brooks Cambion. Um, I haven't used it as much as Jack, but yeah, it's a really comfy saddle. It's a bit heavy, but I think for kind of long gravel rides, comfort is more important than out and out speed. So yeah, Jack wins that one. Actually rounding off that rather bougie cockpit was the Silka Bar tape that I so happen to have lying about in the office that got fit into the bike. It is ludicrously expensive stuff. Nice, but unacceptably expensive. The last place we differed was with our pedal choices. Now I went for a set of Shimano XTR mountain bike pedals which I paired with my Bont Vapor XC gravel shoes whereas Jack went for something different. Yes I actually unless I'm doing particularly gnarly gravel I actually prefer road pedals overall. I can't really quite put my finger on it but I just prefer slightly less float and I find my knees don't suffer quite as bad as that. So I went for a set of Shimano Altegra pedals, which were paired with a pair of Pearl Izumi kind of lace-up road shoes, pretty all-round comfy road shoes. And I think 
it's definitely down to preference in this case rather than a merit of one or the other. Though, if we were on anything more gnarly, I think you would have had the, uh, the upper hand. Yeah, obviously with, with mountain bike pedals, you know, they can take a bit more abuse and you can walk in the shoes. Jack could win slight there because his combo would be slightly lighter. So if you're going for kind of saving all that weight, maybe you're kind of doing a big long gravel race where you know you're not going to be doing any walking, then maybe you choose road shoes. Of course, all of this begs the question where I've gone for a road pedal, you've gone for a mountain bike pedal. When are we going to get a gravel pedal system? It must be around the corner. And finally, any bonus extras that we had on our bikes? Well, I had my now iconic safety pizza pizza slice, which you all clearly loved because you made many comments about it in the video, none of them negative at all. And uh, that's my favorite attention seeking accessory of all. And then rounding out my bike was a pair of Silka Securo bottle cages. Again, very nice bottle cages, titanium, should last the test of time, but they cost 50 pounds a piece. 50 pounds for a bottle cage which is just ridiculous. I mean, I'm gonna have them forever, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that is very expensive. I have a set of um, Topeak aluminium bottle cages on an old mountain bike of mine. I've never lost a bottle out of them and they cost four pounds each. Really? Yeah. Right, well, yes, you're a man of the people, Joe. <laughs> I think it should probably be pretty clear by now, but a lot of kind of building a gravel bike is down to personal preference. So for example, road pedals versus mountain bike pedals, cockpit widths, cockpit styles, that is all largely down to what works for you. And really the two places it does boil down to is tires and gearing. They're the two things that we think you can get right or wrong pretty easily on a gravel bike. Yeah, for tires, definitely something nice and wide around that 40 mil mark, I think to start with. That worked really well. It was pretty fast on the road section, so if you're kind of having to do some road riding to get to the gravel you want to ride, that's a nice balance. And for gearing, it is definitely about finding the balance between top end speed and the ability to spin on the climbs. Yeah, you don't want to be on a, you know, some white, like an, you don't want to be on an Eagle cassette. You know, you don't want to be just having these bailout gears you use twice in a day, but equally you don't end up like me and end up standing up on every single climb for the entire length of it. So it definitely comes down to the kind of terrain you ride in, but just don't do what I did. <laughs> so that is our bikes done and dusted. And now it is up to you folk to decide which one you think is the best. Is it Jack's Specialized Diverge or is it my Argon 18 Dark Matter? As I've already said, there'll be a community post on the Bike Radar YouTube channel. So get voting now. As always, if you have any questions about our bikes as well, please leave those in the comments. Perhaps you want to know where I got my beautiful pizza slice on. Perhaps you want to know how Joe and I curate such wonderful neck beards. Anything is on the cards and we'll do our best to answer. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon so every time we upload a video, you will get a notification. Goodbye. Bye. See our sweat patches. <laughs> <laughs>